Hi, welcome back to Brewers. This is uh, Between Two Urns, the show where we talk about beer and beverages and um, people's passion for craft beer. Today we're joined by uh, Leon Jenkins from Hard Road Brewing. Um, Hard Road is based here in Melbourne's East. Is that right? In the Rangers East. Yep. yep. Melbourne's East, because um, they're in Bayswater North. Uh, Bayswater itself, I suppose. Bayswater. Uh, I don't know where the north border is, but anyway, it's Bayswater. <laughs> so we're in Bayswater. Um, and the, their beers are incredible. They have a, a really cool story about how they've uh, come to become Hard Road. And Leon's here to tell us a little bit about the beer that we're having, which is uh, this uh, chestnut brown ale, mm -hmm. which is unbelievably good and rich. Like we're moving into fall, um, autumn down here, I guess. And it's uh, an incredible beer for this time of year. Really bright, rich colors. Look, we find this beer is really good sort of year round. This is one of our um, probably uh, wasn't anticipating it being a, a core range beer, but it turned out um, every time it came off tap, pe people would get grumpy. So it, it turned into a core range, right? Um, and it's um, it's it's a pretty straightforward uh, English nut brown ale. Um, we we throw chestnut in it at the at one point during the mash, and um, we try and grab some of those really f sort of sweet bready flavors. Um, that you might find in a, in a nut brown. Anyway, we find them with chestnuts. It was a bit of a, a, a novelty at the first run, just because we have chestnut trees in our backyard. And uh, so the first couple runs, we used um, chestnuts out of our backyard, and you roast them, and you, you peel an awful lot of them. And so just taking the, the chestnut meat and not just <laughs> chucking them in. And that was horrible. So uh, we, we use different models of chestnuts now, obviously, uh, at, a, at a commercial at a commercial brewing length uh but yeah no it's it's a it's a really fun beer um, we get some great flavors out it of it it's delicious um, yeah really malt forward um as as all of our beers are going to be pretty malt forward uh, that's the that's the backbone of beer right yep. um love my hops like any man does but um but on the same side malts malts where it malts where it's at and it's definitely driving this the yeah. character in this beer yeah absolutely amazing yep how did you get to become uh, a commercial brewer what was your background with that Oh, look, um, same as everybody's, I think. Um, you start out as a home brewer, right? From California originally. Uh, my wife, uh, Angie, yeah. exactly. My wife, Angie, and I were, um, uh, we were going to homebrew festivals. One of my good mates there was, um, he invited us to a, a homebrew festival, the California Home Brewers Association. Uh, every year they do a homebrew festival, um, say 30 odd home brewers line up around Ojai, um, Lake Ojai, up out of Santa Barbara. And um, uh, for two days, you're sampling uh, a gazillion uh, homebrews, right? Sounds um, terrible. It was horrible. Every year, we had such a horrible time. We decided that we really wanted to we really wanted to bury ourselves in this industry. Everybody there is awesome. Super good time. Had had a ton of fun every time we went. Um, yeah, we moved to Australia, um, and she started working on a brewery straight away. Uh, I, I, had a, I had a former life as, a, as an environmental consultant. Okay. Um, I continued that for a good long time while, while we built the brewery um, and while Angie kind of put things together and got things in place. And uh, yeah, long story short. So you kept, uh, you kept a day job. And oh, far out, yeah. And, and your wife was doing all the, Absolutely. All the, all the groundwork she for the built, brewery. She, she built a brewery. Her, like, like I, I built it with my hands. She built it. Uh, on the keyboard, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so she, she's, she, you know, it was just the two of us all the way through as opening Caltoria, um, and she, uh, she, she was very well placed to do the the work that she was doing at the time, uh, in, in building the brewery. And it's it's a, it's only a credit to her that uh, as we applied for certain licenses and permits and different things along the way, they kind of went through in the first pass. Um, which to me sounds like, uh, from, from anecdotally what I hear from other brewers, that's, that's a bit of an anomaly. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, yeah. So, very, so very patchy. She's, she's incredibly detail-oriented, um, much to my dismay. But anyway, that's, <laughs> she did a great job with getting the brewery opened up and running um, on the first run. You started Caltoria Brewery to begin with. That's correct, that's, yeah. That's what it was back then. That's right. A mixture of California and Victoria. Yeah. yeah. Which... Um, then uh, how long did that last? Like, because um, it, it's still kind of there. It just kind of got folded into the it next did, thing. That's right. Yeah. So the the all the equipment and the warehouse itself 
that that kicked off Caltoria is all still there. That's that's where we're we didn't we didn't move our brew house um, when we when we rolled into Hard Road Brewing. Um, it just sort of morphed into uh, a venue that's open to the public, where previously Caltoria was production only, and that's a tough gig. Um, just trying to get kegs into the city. Uh, we we did it with the help of um, Hemlock Distribution. If you don't mind a plug. No, go for it. Yeah, um, yeah we did it with the help of Hemlock. Um, he, he does a great job of getting beers in where we couldn't. Uh, I'm not a salesman, I'm a, uh, I'm a brewer. So, um, you know, you need to put certain people in those positions that, that they do really well at, and, and Trent does a great job at getting our beers into places. That, that's good, um, good advice. I think a lot of brewers, they probably get into brewing and then realize if they're a one-man show that maybe there's strengths that they had yeah. um, as a brewer, but they don't have uh, in other aspects of the business. Yeah. Um, and that's where probably staffing, yeah, or, or farming out contracting is You quickly super learn what your strengths are and what they're not. Yeah. And, either, either, and if you don't learn it, then you're gonna have issues. But if you, if you can actually appreciate and accept what your, what your limitations are um, at some point <laughs> in, your, in your brewing career, then, then you're probably better off to hand off certain things. And, and I'm definitely better to hand off certain things. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so Caltori operated for a couple of years as as it was. Now, b before we we move to that really quick, I should say because um, I'm I'm quite proud of this. I was Caltori's very first visitor when they weren't having visitors. That's <laughs> and, right. And uh, actually, my my uh, here's a photo of it that Liam brought in. My old man and I actually went and visited the brewery. And here's a uh, this is like 2017. Not really open to the public, but I gave him a call because through one person or another, people kept going, oh, you should go and meet Leon. He's, he's setting up a brewery. You should, yeah, he's American too, yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. And I was like, yeah, all right. Eventually, I did make the call. My dad and I went out there. I think it was that afternoon you called him like, yeah, I'm down here now. Just cruise in. Yeah, and, and, uh, and the place was seriously uh, like, a, like a warehouse with a brewery off to the side of it. Yeah. So they were, what was the, the business was doing? It was, uh, so it was one of, uh, as I was an environmental consultant, uh, it was one of my subcontractors at the time. He was, a, they were a drilling contractor, so environmental geotechnical drilling. Uh, we started building out the, the, the warehouse itself, or the, the brewery footprint itself, um, on my weekends, nights, holidays. Easter's were great, because I could really grab a so big chunk of time and really of put a lot of things together. Oh, yeah, it was, it was everything. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 I didn't spend one, uh, yeah, we didn't, we, I spent a lot of time down at this warehouse. Anyway, so uh, in that time, uh, two years, 20, probably we started putting equipment together around 2015, 2016 started building, 2017 we, we officially started selling beer into the city. Those were, that's when we first started getting kegs out. And that's when you, that's when you visited us, was that's 2017. And it was a Belgian pale ale, I'll remember it. Belgian and, pale ale, And uh, I still have the growler, and uh, <laughs> I was gonna bring it back and say, can you fill this for me? As you well should, because I probably <laughs> gave it to you <laughs> at the time. But, um, I'm a horrible salesman as, 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 long as, as well as a uh, marketer. It was, you know, it was, it was excellent beer even back then. <laughs> and um, one, yeah, one of the things I, I noted was uh, really impressive about the brewery compared to other breweries was you hadn't just bought a turnkey system. Got it. Um, and I, I w thinking at the time, maybe I should get into brewing too, and I, you know, I could do this. <laughs> then I went and saw Leon's setup, and it was like, he's you, you built everything in mm. the brewery. And I yeah. thought to myself, I don't, I don't know how to do any of this. <laughs> like, this is incredible. When it came, because I know you didn't with the, the hot side of your brewery, you built it exactly as you wanted it. Yep. But with the cold side of the brewery, are they customizing the equipment for you? And Apparently they were, because I built them incorrectly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they, they, everything I'd say, I, everything I'd tell them, they'd be like, you sure you want that? I'm like, that's what I want. I know what I'm doing and that's what I want. <laughs> and um, hindsight, I would have, uh, hindsight, I would have probably listened to them a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, just on some pipe sizes and definitely not on tank size. We, were, we could have tripled our tank size. We'd have been happier. But um, cer certain aspects of it. I probably should have listened. We have three unit tanks, yep. three um, two thousand liter unit tanks that we've been um, that uh, that have carried through from Caltoria, and they're they're serving Hard Road proudly at the moment. Uh, we could probably use three, four, five, six more at the moment. Yep. Okay. Mm. So you are definitely expanding. More people are finding the sure. Hard Road. Um, yeah. The the Hard Road brand. So the Belgian Pale Ale is. Um, 
this is one of Angie's beers, my wife. Um, so while we were uh, while we were sort of pilot brewing and, and playing with recipes, cheers. Uh, at the time, we would brew just a little over 100 liters, and we would split it. So I would brew something big and funky and hoppy, and uh, Ange would didn't didn't really go with the dry hop sort of side of things, but. She liked the ale side of things, but she really liked the Belgian profile. That and is awesome. Yeah, yeah, beautiful white ale sort of sort of flavors in it. Um, you get those, you know, you get the banana, the, the cloves, the all the lovely phenolics that come out of that 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 Belgian yeast. Um, so Angie really liked that. So this one, she won. What did she win? We were in Melbourne Home Brewers, and we threw that into one of the competitions. She got first place for well, whatever category that lived in. Yeah. At the time. So this yeah. was. A Belgian pale ale. Belgian pale, yep. And it's nice subdued, like, you know, spicy phenolics a little bit that are in there, but really subdued. And, uh, yeah, beautiful color as well. Like, yeah, pitching. And uh, beautiful keeps cold, its head yeah. up like that. It's, uh, it's delicious. You could have quite a few of these. I think this is, a, this is an evening on these would be fantastic. It is. It's a, it's a delicious beer. It's, it's a ton of fun. And it's it's the it's, it's same thing. We didn't, we didn't, we, you never... Um, you never plan on anything being quote a core range beer. Yeah. But we get you know we get in a lot of strife if we pull it off tap or if it runs out or whatever. We just you know people get. This grumpy. is this is a core range. This will be core range as well. People returning for this one, yeah. So the Belgian Pale at uh, Hard Road, fantastic. I recommend checking this one out definitely. Just tell us a little bit about what you brought in here. Okay. So um, this is a uh, is this all core range? Uh, no, no, no. Um, so we'll. Okay, you can so spin. You can spin it yeah, around. Yeah. yeah. Um, so chestnut brown we talked about. Belgian pale we talked about. Flirtini sour. Um, uh, Flirtini sour. Yeah. So now that one I haven't had. So it's, it's bitching. Yeah. Raspberry cranberry hibiscus. Um, uh, I've got a great distributor. Um, lovely French guy. He's a, he's a great distributor of his of his of his products. Um, I get these fruit purees um, that you, that are just magic. So. Um, is that like a hibiscus? It is, yeah. It's, it's a puree. cranberry hibiscus puree, and it's hard to find purees that are um, that are free of sugars and all those other ingredients or and, and um, uh, preservatives and this is and that's. So you just read. You need a really clean um, fruit to use in beers. Is it still lending some fermentability to the beer? Uh, it w the marginally, but v yeah. very, very, very small amounts. Yeah, okay. th this is raspberry cranberry. Hib hibiscus adds nothing. In fact, um, I can't find it in there. It's a very subtle flavor, um, but it is in there. Um, other folks have said, yep, I, it, everybody has a different palate. Um, and some people will go, yep, that's, I get, I, it's all over the thing. I'm like, all right, cool. I don't get it. But I've had yeah. very few like hibiscus flavored things except the hibiscus flavored sodas in Mexico, hibiscus flavored gum in Mexico. Yeah. So, so yeah, so the, so the Flirtini Sour, um, I was never a big sour fan myself. Um, my, my rep, uh, Trent, said, you, you pull your thumb out and make a sour. I'm like, okay, cool. We kettle sour everything. As sours go, it's, I, I don't, I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't dive off the end of, of the pH scale. Um, I like a drinkable beer. I like to taste the malt in everything I produce. Malt is sort of going to be the, uh, is the backbone of our beers, whether we whether it's hoppy or sour or whatever else descriptor you put to a beer, you're, the malt I want right there. Yeah. So you, you you get the malt out of this as well. Um, there's so many of the fruit sours that you try today are just juice, juice, <laughs> and there's no there's no malt, and it, it kind of misses being beer still, but it's. It is, it, it is, it is, but um, I, I won't, I'm not going to argue that, but it, it is still beer, but yeah. um, they're so fruit forward that it, it can be hard to pick up the yeah. malt in them. Yeah, no, that's it. But, but, it, but, it, but it is a beer. It's, it's a great beer for us as well. Like if somebody, because uh, as, as a venue, you have, to, you have to sort of cater to a lot of different flavors. And um, if somebody comes up and you get this at a brewery, believe it or not, if somebody comes up and says, um, hey, <laughs> I don't drink beer, what do you have? Um, the f we have wines and and ciders and okay, yeah, beers that, and whatever that, else. I, ha I have stuff. that, yeah. but I don't give that to them first. <laughs> I give them the flirtini first. I say, here, try this, and just give them a taster. And they they just they're like, that's awesome. I'll have it. Ninety percent of the time, they'll 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 happily drink 
uh, a sour beer, and then I explained to him like that that is a that is a sour beer. Um, it is a beer. Um, so if you don't like beer and you find yourself at breweries, find out what sours they have. So when you approach an IPA, what how do you how do you like to build an IPA? Mm, I'll look largely West Coast. Um, you, you're gonna every beer if if it's a, if it's a, if it's an IPA from Hard Road, you're gonna have bittering hops in it, and you're gonna taste them. Um, Good. And yeah, that's it. And then you're gonna you're probably gonna have a, a pinch of crystal um, because I think that belongs there. Um, again, just to sort of build that malt profile. Sure. Uh, and then after that, it's we won't have a core range IPA, arguably. Um, I probably just made that up. Now that I'm really? Probably, but I mean, IPAs are a ton of fun, man. Like, there's just thousand different hops. There's 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 new hops coming out almost monthly. There's experimental hops. Nectaron, Eclipse, Dude, Idaho Strata, 7. Idaho Seven, Idaho Seven. As lupulin, yeah. If you haven't tried it yet. Yeah. Mm, okay. <laughs> get on it. So, it's talking about IPAs. We'll just go into Lazy Days quickly. Um, Lazy Days session IPA, four point nine percent. We, as a session, you know, I mean, somebody somebody might say um, IPAs don't live below six percent. Okay, but session IPAs. This was a summer beer. It still is a summer beer. Um, yellow grapefruit. Um, First time we brewed it, we brewed 2,000 liters of it. Um, Brad shredded his knuckles, um, zesting. Grapefruits. Mm, a lot of grapefruit. I can't remember how many off the top of my head, but it was okay. a lot of grapefruit. So we used, um, and we wanted yellow grapefruit. We wanted something, we wanted that real true grapefruit flavor. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so zest uh, and fruit uh, went into both the foil and the fermenter. Um, Happy beer. Um, so this one, I would say, sorry about that. That's good. Um, I would say, in, in color wise, you can see probably not a lot of crystal. I don't think there's, I, if I recall correctly, there's not much of any. Get that one in you. Um, I'm gonna get a little so, room in there, yeah. No, you get, far out, you get the great beer. <sighs> that is magic. That is a bitchin' beer. So, um, um, mm. One thing I learned with grapefruit is uh, it adds, especially yellow grapefruit, it adds bitters. It adds a lot of bitterness to it, which we weren't expecting. I wasn't expecting. So um, you're getting bitterness from the rind as well as from absolutely. hops. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and you can taste it. It's, it's, the, it's sort of the last thing on the back of your tongue. That's, that's the grapefruit. And when you, do you put you rind into the boil? Like uh, towards the end. Towards the end. Yeah, yeah. you want to keep those oils. Yeah. yeah. You, don't want them, you don't want them all to blow off. Um, they probably went in um, with the Whirlpool editions. Okay, cool. So a little bit cooler and a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, and and you get you get. It's just a far out. I all I, this beer is. We're we're only. I think I only have two cases left. We we ran out of tap. This this is brewed. Mm. Well, I don't remember when this was brewed. Um, that's. Uh, you were saying you you know malt is a big focus mm. of your beers, and it still shines through even though it's a uh, you know quite a low alcohol beer. Yeah. The flavors are, are massive. So it would be like, you know, it has the impact of uh, like a normal IPA. Yeah. But um, you, th there's still a really nice malt backbone in there. Right? That's, that's, so that's, that's nice really important. Bready toastiness as well. Yeah. Mm. And, and look, and honestly, you don't, you, we don't have to fight with anything like wheats or anything else to hold a head. You use enough malt. Yeah. It's going to hold a head, man. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't, you don't yeah. have to get, you don't have to get excited with, with a, a they're good glasses for that as well. Yeah, they so, don't hurt, that's right. Yeah. So you don't have to get excited with enzymes and this is and that's and whatever is. Yeah. Just fucking use malt. I'm not saying right high to the bot, but. It works, yeah, it yeah. definitely does. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I would, I would recommend for our brewers watching this, if you're looking to make something that has big impact, um, like an IPA, but something that you can maybe make a session of. Mm. A session IPA, like this, I think I, um, tasting this kind of gets me over the idea that um, I, session IPAs or XPAs are really just hoppy IP, uh, hoppy pale ales, and and it's not. There's something about this, the um, the the forwardness of the not just bitterness but the uh, the hop profile and that yeah. grapefruit shining through makes it a little bit more aggressive than what a normal pale ale would yeah. be like. 
yeah. where and I would be looking for something a bit more smooth. This is this is in your face Look, for a for a session beer. Session ale. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, and but but it is very much a session beer. It cold. I, I crushed heaps of those things building a treehouse. Yeah. Um, and it was yeah. So the cold, uh, hot day. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a really good beer. Brad Brad's a Brad's a bit of a hot magician. He knows how to use them, when to use them. Um, I build the malt profile. I build the uh, I'll build the full recipe, and then I throw it at Brad. And Brad will say X Y Z on hops Let's on timings and things. Yep. Timings, additions, volumes. So knowing that you're kind of hooked up with Yelling Bow Hop Farm mm -hmm. um, through Brad, um, how many of your beers r utilize those whole hops and utilize the the hops from Yelling Bow? Well, let's see, Righties, uh, our harvest ale last year. I don't know that I don't know that we're going to see a harvest ale this year. I think we got pretty bloody busy, and I'm not sure what the what the hop farm's doing this year. But um, last year it was our and our Righties, um, and then on occasion. Uh, We'll run, uh, we'll run a Randall at the bar, and we'll pump. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. And so we'll pump, um, we'll pump Brighties or whatever we feel like cooking up that day through the Randall, and uh, yeah, we'll get some fresh hops through there. E every one of our beer events, uh, we'll do. Well, I'll typically do Righties. Uh, I'll do two taps. I'll do a Righties and then a Righties through the Randall, and we'll change out the hops throughout the beer event. So whether we're at Ballarat or. Marimbula or yeah, beer uh, events are coming back online again. It's yeah. great. So, so yeah. So we we'll, so a lot of those fresh hops get 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 used up in that in that way. But um, fantastic range of beers. I'm really loving this session IPA. Mm -hmm. I, I, every single one of them is you know you can you can taste like that. There's there's heart behind them. Yeah. You know there's something driving the the beer itself. It's not the same as a commercial beer. It definitely is. Uh, a hard road to get to where you've been and uh, no I really want to thank you for coming out and uh, uh, spending some time with us telling us about your beer and your, your core ranges mm. um, do you have anything coming down the pipe that we'd be interested in oh, that's look, uh, yeah, beer wise saying, yeah, you got a, yeah, yeah. a seasonal coming out soon yeah absolutely so we got a stout coming out um, that'll be pretty exciting um, I'm, I, like I said we have three tanks I'm just trying to keep up with what what's going over the bar, but we we do have the, the next the next beer off the line is a stout. Uh, it's a big, dirty old stout. Um, ABV so wise, uh, about six odd. Ooh, all yeah. right. Yep. Yeah. So something something for winter. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, another big IPA. Uh, following that, I'll keep up with a few core ranges in between. We're trying to do about a, uh, a new beer a month, somewhere in that arena. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And currently, how many taps do you have? Twenty taps across the across the bar. Twenty. Uh, I Pretty think good. right now we have uh, we have about uh, eight eight of our own plus guests. That's awesome, and uh, I got to get back in there. We all have to get back in there and uh, and check out the beers. Hopefully, you guys can find these. Uh, you guys distributing to other states as well, or no, just no, in Victoria at no, the moment? We're, we're sticking to we're sticking to Close local to home. at the moment. Yep. That's it. Uh, we'll we'll conquer what's right around us first, and then we'll we'll move out, uh, interstate. So for everybody watching, um, if you can find them, if you can get your hands on them, check out the Hard Road beers. They're amazing. I'm digging them. I've uh, been a fan for, for many years. I've watched them kind of evolve and, and get better and better. I uh, highly recommend them. And um, yeah, so from Keg King and from all of us here at uh, Between Two Urns, thanks for watching Brewers. And Leon, thanks for coming on the show. Man. Okay. Thanks, too. Cheers. Cheers, Brewers. <laughs>